Hi, thank you. Um, thank you for the invitation here. I've, I've been learning a lot. I've, um, it's my first time that I'm at a conference that talks about annotation. And um, I hope that not only have I been learning, but I can contribute to some of the uh, discussions about use cases describing um, what we think would be a very good application for annotations, which is the way curation happens in our field. So um, although I, I'm here representing my project, which is the astrophysics data system, um, I will describe much of what happens in astronomy um, as uh, curation happens in different uh, archives, and then it's gathered together. Um, <clears throat> I should mention that some of the things that we'll talk about have been uh, kind of things that we brainstormed uh, with my colleagues Michael Kurtz, who also works in ADS, and Chris Erdman, who's the librarian at the Center for Astrophysics. So just one quick introduction about our project. The um, ADS is a NASA-funded uh, project. We're basically a repository of um, astronomy and physics papers. Um, we index in our system both open access uh, preprints, like things from archive and the published version of these peer from peer-reviewed journals, um, some uh, great literature as well. Um, the service that we provide is mainly to the end scientists who come to us to search and keep up with what's being published. Um, they love to keep track of how often their papers are cited. They build a bibliography list. Um, you know, they use um, pub uh, authoring workflows like Authoria to um, then integrate uh, the bibliographies and, and create our papers. I put down some numbers, but without going into detail, suffice it to say that every working astronomer uses ADS, and so we've, um, there's about 20,000 um, active astronomers in the world, and our heavy users are over 55,000, so they, they go beyond astronomy into physics and other areas. Uh, and we're indexed by all the major um, search engines. So we're one of the components of um, the archives that support uh, astronomy research throughout the world. It's a very international um, research effort. And um, what happens is that um, since we try to aggregate uh, and link resources together, a lot of people come to our site as a starting point for their research efforts. Um, Different uh, systems curate uh, data sets, and those are then referenced back to the literature. And often, the connections are created um, simply, you know, the, the type of curation that happens for uh, data or claims about data um, is made in one of the following ways. It's, it's um, the three examples that I have here. It may be um, in the form of being able to say that this particular astronomical object has been mentioned in a paper and the paper reports that um, the measurement of its redshift is 0 0.182. Um, so this would be one of the astronomy object databases that collects this information. Uh, archivists that maintain uh, the actual raw data might be able to, uh, might want to identify a paper uh, because it mentions the data that was studied in the paper as being uh, one of the data sets in their archive. Or it could be just some kind of semantic annotation that says, well, there's multi-wavelength data being discussed in this paper, and uh, it's about the interstellar medium. So all of these things happen post-publication. The, the publication process only um, uh, captures some of the things that people would want to um, talk about in the, um, in the scholarly uh, discourse. So one of the things we do is we try to make it easy for uh, end users to enrich the metadata. Um, this is an example of one of um, a record, metadata record. We allow people to submit corrections to this record. And even though the basic metadata will not change, uh, we might miss a citation or um, uh, something about this publication. So the users um, can enhance the metadata in our system by simply pushing a button. The other thing we do is we try to expose the connections between papers and research data. So in this, this is a list of results um, about uh, the search that I made was weak gravitational lensing, looking at the most cited papers. And we have a tab on the left that shows that there's data products available from a variety of archives. So we were able to provide that as a filter and then as a way to um, link uh, the papers back to the data products. 
Same thing for uh, the astronomical objects that you see on the left. They're called Simbad objects here. Um, you can look at the full uh, article details and you can see that um, we provide a link to references and citations, so other papers, as well as uh, full text articles and the data products on the upper right um, hand. So we do all of this by aggregating these resources and we then expose them um, so that they can be reused in other contexts. This is uh, one of the applications on the Elsevier platform that uses um, our API to pull in basically data sets related to uh, the particular paper that uh, Elsevier published. And so they're able to link then to the object databases thanks to the fact that we have aggregated that information and exposed it to them. The other thing that, one of the reasons why this effort has been so successful is that I think because our community buys into the, um, the whole philosophy that making data free and open is a big win for our community. So I call it here the linked open data advantage, even though it's not linked open data. And I know there's people in the audience who, are, uh, <laughs> who have written the spec. So it's linked in, uh, and open in the um, general sense of the word. Um, but so a few years ago, it was shown in the, some of the papers um, by our colleague Rick White that actually um, the Hubble Space Data, which is one of the greatest data sets in astronomy, um, is reused at a higher rate than the new um, data sets that are taken are used. So archival data had, in a particular year had produced 321 papers as opposed to um, 252 papers of the new observations. Um, so well-linked data and well-curated data is used data, which you probably all knew. Um, here, then I, I um, reference all the uh, recent paper by Heather Pivor um, about reuse of data in uh, biology and our own study at the bottom of the citation advantage for um, papers in astronomy that have uh, data linked to them, uh, open linked um, data sets available to them, where we find about a 20% citation advantage for those papers. So up until now, when I show these slides, a lot of people have this general reaction that says, wow, you guys really have your act together. You got it all figured out. You're great. There's nothing else that you can improve upon. And um, I'm here to say that, no, there's a ton of things that we're not doing as well as we could. And uh, there are lots of opportunities to improve over what we've done. So here's a list of problems. And you know, hopefully, um, some of the clever people around here can help us improve on uh, what we've done. Um, all of the things they describe, the, the collection of information that goes into creating these links um, are a result of often tedious workflows that are done uh, by different archives. Um, and there are systems that have been built 15 years ago, for the most part. Uh, in many cases, it's librarians who do this. And they, they really are focused on the task. Um, they're not able to actually uh, do the level of programming and enhancement of the system that we would like. The, so the curation is, happens in closed environment. A lot of the data that is collected during that curation is stored in local databases. So it's never exposed uh, to the public. And it's hard to, for anyone in particular ourselves, to reach and expose it. So we mediate some of these shortcomings by trying to harvest and um, then link back to s this content. But it's not um, done in the real sense of linked data sense, because uh, we can't really follow our nose and, and find out more information about all of this. Here's an example of uh, one of such workflows. Um, it starts with a literature search. Um, this is done by the librarian. The, one librarian at the European Southern Observatory. Um, the full text is scraped from a PDF, actually. It, uh, entities are extracted. There's a triage of the whole process where um, some um, proposal IDs and observation IDs are identified. They're put in a database, and then the database is locked away. All we have at the end is the list of bibliographic identifiers and data products um, that is pushed out to the public. 
but all the annotations that were done in the process are stored away. Here's another project called ScienceWise that uh, allows people to do semantic tagging of articles in archive. And again, here the user is allowed to um, associate tags from an ontology to papers. Um, again, each user can do it, and then this information is stored on their, on their platform, but not otherwise exposed to third parties. Um, this is yet another case that makes me cringe even more, where um, the, our colleagues in France that maintain a database of astronomical objects scan um, regularly new PDFs being created by the publishers. They have these beautiful tools that find, uh, using an extensive knowledge base, all mentions of objects in the, um, in the document. They actually create an annotated PDF with all these object names, and then a librarian extracts the list of identifiers, puts them in the database, and this beautifully anno annotated PDF is thrown away because um, they can't republish it. It's, it's copyrighted material, so it goes in the trash bin. It's true. So how can we fix this? Or here are some, some of my ideas. First of all, we need to provide a platform, a web-based platform where this stuff can happen. Um, stop doing, rolling your own and doing it in your own little courtyard. You, you, we just have to um, pro provide it at a global, global scale. Um, so we think that a web-based portal that supports different um, roles, scientists can create their own annotations and reuse them, but librarians in particular who are a trusted source of curated metadata are best um, informed and prepared to actually uh, create the annotations that, um, th that we know um, we need to use to incorporate in our system. Um, so we basically think that if we are able to, excuse me, enhance our search and incorporate um, basically ontologies and uh, um, semantic annotations, this will go a long way to helping. And then, of course, we want to make this available using the open annotations, uh, make it available to third party so that it can then be integrated into other products and in particular back into the uh, publisher's platform. So this would be something that is shared across the community. Why are we the right venue to do this? Well, we have the full text of the current and past literature. Actually, the major publishers like Springer and Elsevier give it to us for the purpose of indexing. Um, we already have a system that supports tagging by uh, end users, so the creation of pri private libraries, as we call them. We are developing tools to actually describe uh, the knowledge in, in our um, discipline. We have uh, an astronomy thesaurus, which is machine-readable SCOS file, and uh, there's other lists that we can use. And we have a group of librarians that are very eager to participate in the process. So if we were to do it, th this is an experiment uh, which exists. Um, just to show you as, as a concept, as a prototype, what could be done is that we could track um, the flow of information starting from uh, the creation of a proposal to observe a particular set of uh, data sets um, to the end product, which is a, a list of papers that have been published about this particular data set. Um, and then from it, for instance, generate a set of metrics to evaluate the impact of this uh, scientific proposal over them. All of this you would get for free if we had everything linked together, just as, as, as I described. And this is the place where you can go to see this um, proposal, uh, this uh, prototype. So in summary, um, sorry for going over, so I think we have a very good platform um, where, we can, where we can greatly increase the impact of all this activity. We have the, the right content, we have the community culture, and we have the means to um, take this opportunity and make it better. Um, unfortunately, there's no funding so far for any of this. Um, there's only goodwill from the part of our collaborators. Um, but we think that if, if we can't do it for this field and then extend it in the physical science, it's, it's going to be just that much more difficult to do it elsewhere. Thank you.